Recently, I've decided to sacrifice my wallet to Games Workshop. But in case you don't know what GW is, good. Run. Hide quickly before they find your location and lure you out of hiding with tiny plastic unassembled action figures, cause holy shit. Warhammer as a franchise is something I've always been interested in getting into. Like many other people, the fan film Astartes was a great starting point to grab my interest, and other content creators made great informative videos on the topic that even further pushed this entry. For a long time, I hesitated getting into it, and now that I've gotten a few minis and started playing with some of my friends and further dived into trying to understand the game, I'm constantly getting turned off by a variety of problems the game has, at least from the perspective as an outsider, new player, and idiot. I have money! It's buried out here! It's... 80 million dollars? If there's one thing that quickly turns off a strong majority of people that hear about Warhammer, it's simply the cost. A month or so ago, when I went to a local store to pick up my first minis, there was a group of kids standing next to me looking at Yu-Gi-Oh cards that said, Oh look, it's Warhammer, that game that costs their life savings. And uh, you know, I can't say they're wrong. Although I can't definitively say that everything is overpriced because I don't know what the cost is to make minis, I think it's easy to see why anyone would be turned off from ever wanting to try and start getting into the game. A single squad of miniatures seems to average around the $50 to $60 mark from what I can tell, and that's not nearly enough to start playing the game to its maximum scale, or in any ideal way. $60 can buy you at least one solid newly released AAA game, or a variety of great classics or amazing indie games. Although these purchases are digital forms of media, arguably incomparable to something like physical objects, the entry cost to getting access to these is relatively reasonable when you take into account a computer can do a large variety of things, and a gaming console also can, but in a much more limited way, primarily focused on playing other games and or using as a very expensive Roku. I bring this up as it's worth noting that $60 isn't even the start of how much money you'll be spending on Warhammer to really get into it. The cost of codexes, the rule books, the paints, the brushes, assembly materials, terrain, and eventually any other variety of things you may want to fit into other miniatures or armies, uh, it adds up pretty quickly. And unlike something like a PC or PS5, stuff you can buy for Warhammer is essentially only used for Warhammer. There are initial entry costs for, well, pretty much anything, and without knowing the production costs of GW's projects, it's tough to say how fair the pricing options are, but I think it's safe to say for the average person, it's too much to consider investing in something they're not even really sure if they'll like. And for the sake of my argument, I'm going to make the safe assumption that GW does not fairly price most of the things they sell and simultaneously have a terribly outdated business model. I'm going to echo a sentiment that many Warhammer players have expressed before, and that's that there shouldn't be a need for a physical codex anymore. In the age of the internet, it makes no sense why they would continue to push this business model, especially considering there are constant balance patches now that invalidate information in these books. On top of this, every few years with new additions, they entirely invalidate these ways of paper, and people will say, oh well, it's because they want money. Well yeah, obviously they want money, they're a fucking business, but continuing to push this model is effectively shooting themselves in the foot, turning away prospective customers. They can only leech money off their fans for so long until they really have none left. The physical copies of these books should be supplementary options for players who want them, not forced on everyone. And, you know, some also might say, but there are things like Battlescribe and Wapedia, man. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm aware of that. But using these sites isn't always intuitive, well, to me at least, and sometimes I struggle to find the information that I'm looking for. If GW were to put these codexes online, I believe it would do a lot to help out new players who don't have the money to throw on an aging book on top of everything else they're already asking money for. Again, with pricing, I think that models are just ridiculously overpriced, even without knowing the cost of production. Yes, some of them are really well designed, and I'm sure they aren't extremely cheap to make, like something like, you know, Green Army Men, but other companies push out similar products for a fraction of the cost. Certain armies, like for example the Astro Militar and Materianids, require you to buy a ridiculously large amount of models, which further pushes away people who might want to get into the game for those specific armies. Again, people will say, GW will never lower their prices because of how much money it earns them. But at the same time, I think that if there wasn't such a large paywall to get involved into Warhammer, they would eventually earn more money by bringing in more players, or more importantly in their eyes, customers. 3D printing also presents a I'd say fairly big problem for the company, as the rise of this technology presents a far cheaper alternative to get into the hobby, especially if they already have access to the needed equipment. Handling your customers with care is in itself an investment, and fortunately, much like other large game companies within the gaming space as a whole, they're far too focused on making as much money in the present as possible to have any foresight of the consequences those decisions can bring. 
They shall be my finest warriors, these men who give themselves to me. This section is more of a small gripe than anything, and yes, I know, I'm not the first to make this joke, but holy shit, <laughs> is there a lack of variety in 40k in terms of models and armies to collect. I love space marines just like everyone else, but when half of the roster of playable characters is essentially big dudes in power armor with different favorite colors, uh, I'd say everything quickly becomes homogenized. Again, don't get me wrong, I think that the Space Marines and all their sub-factions should exist, but I also believe a variety of other factions to choose from should exist as well. I guess I didn't really realize how bad it was until I looked over at Age of Sigmar, which I know a lot of people love to hate, but I saw all their badass shit they had going on, I was like, man, I kinda want that. Many of the armies in Sigmar look very distinct, each having their own identity. There may be an overlap in certain themes depending on what order they belong to, but generally speaking, everything feels like its own, which is great because it gives people a variety of armies to choose from. Not to mention there are sub-factions within those armies to help further bolster player choice. Taking a look at 40k, not including the many different flavors of Space Marines, Eldars, and Chaos Entities, there are around 15 different armies in 40k. And I might be being a bit too generous with my estimation on that estimate, as even some of those could be argued that they could be merged together. On the other side, you know, maybe I'm being a picky asshole. I don't know. But I feel Warhammer 40k could use a huge addition of different Xenos. I think why Age of Sigmar feels so various in its options for me is that there are many different races all with their own fairly unique armor, faces, shapes, and sizes. Looking at 40k, most everyone is just a humanoid in a souped up astronaut outfit of varying sizes. People have pointed out before that there are already so many existing factions that GW could and should expand into full armies and hopefully in the future to start listening to the feedback more to hopefully diversify their options for players. And Maybe they can also update some of the existing armies in the game. That that would be good too. I don't understand. What do you not understand? I don't get the joke. Uh, as a new player of 40k, I can uh, safely say I have no idea what the fuck is going on. On the surface level, the game isn't actually too difficult. The core rules are relatively easy to understand. And once you play a few games, like my friends and I, uh, you kind of slowly get better. I'd say the issue comes when you try to learn faction-specific rules. There are already rules within rules within rules, and as someone who barely understands how the basics of the game works, it's incredibly daunting to look at these vast pages of information. I thought that maybe that this was just a me problem, something that I would overcome as I kept playing, but other people who have also been playing the game a lot longer than I have have expressed the same feelings of being overwhelmed. Described in the community as rule bloat, 40k suffers from an overwhelming amount of rules and strategies that need to be remembered for ideal play. Not only do you need to know about everything your army does and when slash how to use it, but to play tactfully, you probably also want to know what your opponent does. Due to the sheer amount and complexity of many of the rules in the game, not to mention the fact that they're going to be changed by either a huge or small degree at any time, I think it's easy to see why players should be frustrated and confused by everything being thrown at them. From what I've heard, this is part of the appeal of Age of Sigmar, as apparently the game is a lot more simple and easier to understand, offering the ability for players to greatly understand the fundamentals of the game while working to master more advanced tactics and playstyles. A counter argument to this is that if certain rules were removed, it would make the game a lot less interesting and more simplistic. Of course, not ever having experienced a higher level of play, it's tough to say that this argument would be wrong, but as mentioned before, many people who have been playing the game a lot longer than I have have expressed the same issue. Not to mention, I believe this ignores the benefits removing certain rules, or at least part of them, would bring. Part of the complexity of the faction-specific rules is that many of them have conditional requirements. Our massive wall of text, or as discussed before, are way too various within a faction. By removing some of these rules, or at least simplifying them, it would allow for better balancing by GW, allow for an easier experience for new players, and offer more energy to focus on other general tactics of the game instead of attempting to remember all of these synergies and powers at your disposal. To summarize, I don't know entirely what I'm talking about. These are just my frustrations and observations as a new player. The cost of the game is extremely daunting and GW would, in my opinion, earn a lot more money if they lower the price overall for many of their products and scrapped some of their old business practices, like pushing a physical codex. If GW offered a greater variety of armies and factions of 40k, I think it would do a lot to bring in newer players and of course would catch the eye of current collectors who are tired of seeing the same 5 things in rotation on the tabletop. Finally, the overwhelming amount of rules flung at new and existing players is easily enough for most people to just move on to something that's easier to understand, at least at the surface level. Hopefully in the future, GW can work to improve the experience of the game not only for new players but for existing ones as well. But for everything that I've heard, it sounds like that's uh, not too likely to occur. For everyone who's made it this far in the video, I really appreciate it. Um, I'm, you know, new at YouTube and Warhammer in general, so I don't even know what I'm doing or what I'm talking about. Um, but I just really appreciate you watching. Uh, hopefully you tune in for some of my other videos. If not, no worries. Hope you have a good day regardless. Take care.